don't really know. Not really. Oh, come now, Doctor. Are you going to kill me? You've given us no alternative. For a moment, I was afraid I had. What do you mean? Death wasn't my worst fear. I asked you what you meant. Barnabas, please, please let me try to talk to him He again. has a question to answer. I prefer death to... To what? Say it. You know to what? Say it, I dare you. Barnabas, don't. To being something like you are. Something loathsome and evil. Tell me more. Something inhuman and... Go on. Human form. Go on. I prefer anything rather than becoming the undead. Really? I only... My only regret, Barnabas, is that I won't live to be able to destroy you. I see. So you read the notes. Then you realize I have the power to turn you into something not unlike myself. Barnabas. If my experiments are successful, we can undo all the harm. Oh, please, Julia. But that way he, he wouldn't have to kill you. I don't want to live if it has to be that way. Please don't let him kill you. Barnabas, if you make me into something like yourself, I, I swear I'll find a way to destroy myself. But first I'll find out a way to let people know what you are. Do you believe that your free will will remain after my little treatment? Yes, enough of it will remain. Enough of yours remains. If you chose Barnabas, you, you could destroy yourself. You certainly could turn yourself in. Never. No, of course you won't. But you could. And I would. Witness, Doctor, I tried to save him. Proceed. You don't have to hold me. I, I know I can't escape. I won't let you try. We want a minimum of clutter. I don't want the room strewn with broken objects. Barnabas, I'm not going to struggle. Death is undignified enough without my making it worse. Dave, isn't there anything I can say to him? <laughs> isn't there anything I can say to you? Whatever he says, I'll never trust him now. Proceed. You uh, did bring the hypodermic with you, didn't you? Yes. Then I turn the patient over to you, Doctor. Don't call me that. Not now. Dr. Hoffman. One of the brightest and I thought bravest doctors I've ever known. Oh, don't. So much, so much good you could have done. The lives you could have saved, Julia. Stop. The suffering you could have helped. Please. You have the means to stop him. How am I to die? A perfectly natural death for a healthy man in the prime of life. A heart attack. Julia. I'm waiting. I, I, I can't. You no longer have a choice. I can't. You have to. He's, he's my friend. You no longer have friends. He's right. You no longer have any friends, Julia. I, I can't do it. Then I'll do it myself. No. Give it to me. No, I can't let you. I said give it to me. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But a lot of knowledge is even more dangerous. Sarah. Sarah. Where? I don't know. I don't know. There. There. Sarah. Is she here? No. No one is here. You dare mention her name to me. <laughs> Loathsome I am and evil. You can mock me for that. But leave my pain alone. No. Tell me he's dead. He's dead. Death must have been instant. There doesn't seem to have been any pain. And such a good man, too. He lived only to serve others. Please, don't make fun. Let's... Let, let's get out of here. Aren't you going to examine the patient? What, what do you mean? 
<laughs> to make sure that nothing was displayed but the symptoms of a sudden coronary attack? Nothing else will show. He looks to you like a man who might have met such a demise? Yes. Even with your practiced doctor's eye? Yes. How can you say that when you haven't so much as glanced at him? I, I don't have to. I, I know the medicine he was given. Medicine? It was actually a medicine? Yes. A lesser dosage could have been curative. Ah, but it was curative. The good doctor had a fatal curiosity. Now he doesn't have it anymore. Let's, let, let, let's get out of here. Are you ready? Yes. Then you intend to leave the hypodermic needle there on the table. No. All right, let, let's go. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. Then, what about the notebook? It's there in his pocket. The notebook. But leave it if you like. Really, Doctor, you're not your thorough professional self. I would have thought you'd be used to death by now. I helped you do it. You were a little less efficient than I expected. But you were fine, considering our entire success. Answer your phone, will you? Let, let, let's hurry. Are you sure you haven't forgotten anything? Yes, nothing. Nothing except your friend, of course. Yes, he was my friend. You no longer have friends, Julia. Oh. Now, what is it? He's, he's not dead. What do you mean? Dave? Who are you talking to? Dave, he's not dead. Didn't you hear it? I heard nothing. But he spoke to me. He's not dead. I know a dead man when I see one. And so do you. But I, 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 I heard him speak. You heard nothing. Now come. I... Well, let's get out of here. I heard him. I heard him. I did. <laughs> of you. Getting this notebook from Woodard cost the poor man his life. You wouldn't want him to have died in vain. I, I won't go ahead with the experiment. I'll, I'll go away. Uh, that's impossible. We need each other now more than ever. Now that Woodard's gone, I'm really the only friend you have. You no longer have friends, Julia. No. 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 Why did you do that? It was magnificent. What? Oh, I only wanted to test it. Well, obviously it works. Now, there are still a few details to fix. But you explained to me previously that it only needed a test to prove that the acid uh, 
had activated. Well, I'd say you've uh, succeeded admirably, as you always do. I'm not ready to do the treatments yet. But we were going to do it once Dr. Woodard was safely out of the way, is he? You know the answer to that? You're the one that killed him? I know he's out of the way, but safely. That's what I'm eager to know. Uh, what have you heard? There was an autopsy. Yes? He died of a massive thrombosis and a coronary occlusion. A heart attack. How sad. How very, very sad. A man in his prime, too. I know what it's like. Extremely inconvenient to have a, con a conscience, isn't it? Well, you must keep it in close check at every moment. I can't go on. Please. I, I was only making a test so I could see it work for the first and last time. Discontinue. This magnificent structure. Yes, please. I couldn't consider it. I've come too far. We've both come too far. I can't go any further. Nonsense. You have no choice. You can't force me. Besides, I'm your only hope, and you know it. True, but remove that hope. And what difference does it make to me? What becomes of you? No, oh, Barnabas, please don't make me go on. You had a plan before you met me. Now go on with it. I'm sorry. But you've given me one irretrievable gift. Hope. The hope of becoming human again. The hope of being able to love and not destroy. Even the hope itself is a hint of what it must be like to be a human being. I can't let it go now, ever. You couldn't bear being human. With humanity comes conscience. With conscience comes guilt. With guilt comes suffering. You couldn't bear it. I can. I must. If I can love and not destroy, surely, Forgiveness can be found. For what you've done? Perhaps not. But let me love first, as a human being loves. And if there's still no forgiveness, well, let me take the punishment as a, not as a monster, but as a man. You only say that because you don't really know what a torment guilt can be. Don't I? I have the memory of another time before I became what I am. If I didn't know what being a human was, why would I be so eager to strive for it? I should remind you, to love without destroying is not a particularly prominent human trait. Perhaps you're more human now than you realize. I know what I am, and I know that I must become something else. The first laboratory treatment will begin at midnight. I wouldn't be that sure. Strange, but I am. No? Uh -huh. Yes, because I'm confident of you, Doctor. I wonder what I'll be like as a human being. quiet all the time. He always used to fight and argue and, and, and run off and do all the things he wasn't supposed to do. Now he won't even leave his room. How'd he take it when he was told about Woody? He doesn't know about it yet. Nobody told him? We've been afraid to tell him because of the way he's been acting. Really took the stuffing out of him, didn't it, when we proved to him that he really didn't see what he thought he saw in the old house? Just the fact that he thought he saw Barnabas in a coffin proves how disturbed he must be. Brooke, please, can't we go on living here? We, we could fix up the West Wing just beautifully. You've never even seen it. Vicki. Vicki, are you sure it's because of David? 
Or is it because you really want to fix up that old museum in there? Hmm? I beg your pardon. But I couldn't help overhearing something about fixing up a museum. Good evening, Barnabas. Good evening, Burke. Good evening, Vicky. I was trying to persuade Burke to restore the West Wing, but it's hopeless. What, Burke? Or, or the West Wing? Both. Vicky, can you excuse me for a moment? I have a couple of phone calls I should have made half an hour ago. All right. Hurry back. Don't worry, I will. I wish there was some way that I could persuade him. There's no way of persuading Burke to grant you this one wish. As long as he feels the way he does, I, I certainly can't put it on that basis. I can't understand a man, especially one who loves you, refusing you anything. I can't really blame him. I suppose that the West Wing would be a, a sort of a museum, and Burke certainly isn't the museum type. I doubt any place where you live could possibly be a museum. He would make it come alive immediately. Well, thank you. But even if I... If I was there, all that Burke would see is the mustiness of the carpets and, and the fading in the old paintings. But if the wing were completely restored, much in the manner of the old house where I am, I find that far from old and musty. So do I. But it's hopeless. I know it is. Allow me to say this. Assuming that Burke will agree to it, I could be of great service to you. I think I've proved my ability to restore old property. You'd help. I could be of service to you and them. That would be exciting. Yes, we could make it come alive again, just as it was a long time ago. Yes. It would seem such a shame not to. And then it wouldn't be a museum, would it? Far from it. No, it's, it's no use. It's not what Burke wants, which is the same thing as saying it's not what I want. I'm sorry to see you surrender so easily something that's so obviously important to you. It's not that important, not really. I know that if there was something that I wanted, I would pursue it no matter what. But it's Burke that's important to me. After that, nothing else matters very much. Forgive me if I say I don't believe you. Oh, I know that Burke means a lot to you, but so do other people. David, for instance, Mrs. Stoddard. Yes, they do. And Collinwood itself, for that matter. Mm -hmm. I love Collinwood. Not only for what it is, but for what it symbolizes. The past. The past. I can remember when I began to love the past much too well. Have you ever really stopped? I think I have, because Burke has shown me that the past isn't as important as the future. Of course. In spite of my predilection for the past, I, I, I share your insistence on the importance of the future. Believe me, like yourself, I put great stress on the future and what it can bring. Just what are you doing? Just finishing up a few notes and observations. I'm afraid, Doctor, that in your mind you tend to exaggerate the audience who will see your notes. They're for my own use. To help me, to help us. It's such a dreary night out. No moon, no sign of life outside. I find the evenings increasingly tedious of late. Is there something you'd like to do? What do you have in mind, Doctor? A game of cards or cribbage? If you'd like. No, I'm for something else. The day when Vicky Winters becomes Josette. And then, when my lady is here with me in this room, the evenings will be filled with perfume and sweetness, and not with the tedium that fills it now. I'm sorry you find time going so slowly. Just go back to your notes, Doctor. 
The sooner you finish what you want, the sooner I will have what I want. Is that not correct? Well, no. It's not correct. Well, what do you mean? I told you that you'd be in a less vulnerable position to Vicky Winters and as far as the world is concerned, but I didn't promise that you'd get Vicky. You do your part, Doctor, and I will do mine. Barnabas, you talk constantly of the time when Vicky Winters is going to be here. How do you plan to get her here? When that time comes, and it will be very soon, my dear Josette will come to me quite willingly. You really believe that? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. For one thing, Vicky's not in the least interested in you. And you know that. She's interested in Burke Devlin. Perhaps I should point out to you, Doctor, that when the young lady is ready to return my special interest, she will no longer be Vicky Winters. She will be, for all intents and purposes, Josette. Do you think that's a reason for her to come here? Well, I think it's a very good reason. I don't. Why not? Tell me, did Josette ever come to you willingly? Then why is Josette so important to you when you were never very important to her? You're filled with questions tonight, aren't you, Doctor? I don't mean to pry. Of course you don't. I just don't want you to build your life on a, on a self-deception. A self-deception, you call it? Oh, you do amuse me, you and your modern scientific words, you and your cold clinical thinking. My thinking is neither cold nor clinical, believe me. And your curiosity amuses me too, as well. You're so curious to know everything. Whatever I tell you, it isn't enough. And it's always Josette. Always curious about Josette. As if she were, what shall we say, a rival of yours? That isn't true. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Very well, we shall see. Get your coat. I will tell you all there is to know about Josette. Um, where are we going? I must take you to the right place to tell you about Josette. The place where Josette died. Come, Doctor. It's a perfect night for it. Cold, dark, a moonless, starless night. A night, perhaps, when ghosts can walk. And who knows, even reach out and touch those people they still love. Josette was the gentlest and most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I still remember the first time I saw her. It was a grey, cloudy day, and we had all gathered at my father's house to welcome the new Collins bride. I was not particularly anxious to be there. I, I had other things to do, more important things, I thought, than to welcome my middle-aged uncle's new wife. And then I saw her, and I was spellbound by her. When she smiled at me, I loved her. I vowed I would win her no matter how long it took. But she was a good wife to him, and as time went on, I grew desperate. I had to have her. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. She loved him. What choice did I have but to be her good and faithful friend Barnabas? I was humiliated by my position. I had to live with it for a long time. And then I knew suddenly how I could win her. How? She was young when she married him, and he was middle-aged. But as the years passed, she began to see that she was married to an old man. She felt as if life had been stolen from her. She began to fear time. 
and I knew that only I could defeat time for her, and then she would be mine forever. And she would have been, if she hadn't been foolish and frightened. Part of us, what happened? It's such a dark, deep night out and very cold, isn't it? Yes. Barnabas, when you talked about Josette, you, you never seemed more human. I understand now how much you really loved her. How much I loved her. Yes. But she's gone now, and you will be happier if you stop measuring her against everybody you meet. I'll be happier. What a quaint thought. Someone's coming. It's Vicky. Vicky, what are you doing out so late and in such a lonely place? Hello, Barnabas. Julia. What's wrong, Vicky? You, you look sad. We've just had a report that Burke's plane crashed in the jungle. <gasps> no. Side at the plane or any of the passengers. I had to get out of that house. I, I just couldn't stay here. Something brought me here. I don't know what it was. I, I don't even understand what it was. Perhaps you will someday. Barnabas. I know it, it's cold and, and there's no reason for you to, to suffer in the chill any longer. You go back to the house and I'll remain here with Vicky. But I really don't mind. The cold? Nonsense. You're just being polite. You just said it was chilly. And you know how concerned I am for your health, my dear. <laughs>